Theories of authentic happiness are inscribed into the minds of many. Philosophical speculation, indoctrination, or experiential judgment. Like a tablet kept close to abide to, to atone to, to reach that better you, that happier you. But happiness isn't objective. Cultures and individuals alike share a plethora of takes on what it is to be happy. Before the seemingly unstoppable growth of consumerism creeping ever closer into all corners of our globe, Westerners set out on exploratory expeditions seeking lands far from sight. Conquest, riches, or scientific ponder, whatever the case, stakes were set for monetary plunder. The savages will never be tamed till we can place value on their land, said a famous Western merchant. A dismal outlook from the onset of the cogs that began turning. Theories of happiness roll out like A, B, and C. The hedonist fills himself with pleasure. Desires he can seek that which they need. Ticks on the daily bucket list fill the list right with glee. But to think for a moment, if that which is sought, that which brings pleasure is conditioned and taught. Happiness is never so simple when power is at play. Cultural perspectives shatter when power interplays. Click, click, click goes a selfie stick but what makes one happy can make another sick. With consumers' happiness full steam ahead, mass production paved ways for the expansion of places and people. Control forests, cleared forests for cows to graze. All those mug price parties, half of them thrown away. Are you loving it? But most of us know the destruction we cause. But objects of joy are pushed, hung above noses like fish on hooks. Digital spaces create places and new faces while pushing us further from holding one another. Would I be happier pitched up in a field, tending to my wigwam? I don't know. I wouldn't be pressured on poke to smile and grin with a beautiful set of gnashes made from top range porcelain. I wouldn't end up browsing for hours through pictures of perfection to make me think, that could be me, if only I could afford. I'd better button up that shirt and hurry to work. Just a little spend here, a new set of threads, a top notch barber's doing half hour on this sunbed. I could look like them. Wouldn't that make me smile? Get a nice girlfriend then, maybe a house and a car so I too can pretend that I'm happy. But what then? What next? The propaganda agents of World War II turn their assault on the consumer, on me and on you. To achieve happiness now we're coerced to consume, but there's always the next upgrade, the next model, the next you. I'm pursuing happiness but I'm feeling empty, I'm browsing online but I've already plenty. The pursuit of happiness seems momentary. The realisation of disappointment repeated and heavy. And I'm okay, I can ride the train. Whether it leads on to further disappointment or further disdain. But what about those unable to climb? Too poor to live, to learn, to earn? Stuck on the outside, swollen and burnt from the liquor they find solace in watching this world go by. The pursuit of happiness which we've all been imbued has many strands needing drastic review. Instantaneity, ever connected, yet more and more reach for the pills to converse. Or the tip-tap swipe to construct the social verse. More and more conflicted between bettering ourselves or frugally living to share personal wealth. The ethical self, or loathed success. Maybe we were happier before all this mess. Thank you. Yeah.